The NAACP Image Awards airs on TV One on Saturday from Pasadena, California. Uh, and one of the folks uh, hoping to uh, bring home uh, an Image Award uh, is uh, our next guest, uh, Dr. Eddie Laud, professor uh, at Princeton. His book has been nominated for an Image Award. It is Democracy in Black, How Race Still Enslaves the American Soul nominated in the Outstanding Literary Work Nonfiction category. And so glad to have Eddie back on the show via Skype. Eddie, how you doing? I'm good, Roland. How are you? And thanks for making that happen. Doing great. <laughs> Say it again. Thanks for helping make that happen with the NAACP Image Awards, because I came on your show to talk about that book. Well, not a problem. And so hopefully uh, you'll bring home an award. And I got nominated for Outstanding Host, and hopefully I get my third one as well. So, so let's talk about this issue. Uh, the, it's very interesting. I just had this conversation uh, with Elizabeth Eckford, one of the Little Rock Nine. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think about your book as well. And the reality is we, we are still uh, literally battling uh, when it comes to, America, to African Americans being fully free Americans. 398 years after 20 odd Africans arrived in 1619, uh, and even after Reconstruction, even after the Great Compromise, even after the Jim Crow, Black Freedom Movement, you name it, Black Power Movement, we are still trying to be fully free Americans. I mean, it's so true. I'm just and uh, I said uh, in my speech that uh, the main thing is that Donald Trump isn't new to us. Uh, that this particular moment is is isn't new. That it's familiar. Uh, that it's just simply a reassertion of what I call in the book the value gap. Uh, the value gap is the fundamental belief that white people matter more than others, and that belief continues to animate this society. Uh, and we've been struggling against it, uh, struggling to make real the promise of democracy since, since we were brought here. So, you know, we talk about, you know, how dangerous Trump is and, and how, how meaningful uh, his election was to white America, to working, white Amer working class white America, but we know what this is. Um, and like you said, we... It's just the latest instance in our long, our long struggle in this country uh, to be free. And and when we talk about this 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 fight to be free, mm -hmm. uh, when you literally have white Americans, and we look at the polling data, uh, mm -hmm. who who other believe, oh, enough has been done for African Americans. King wrote about this. Dr. King did in Chaos or Community. Where do we go from here? He wrote about this in 1967, saying this was going to happen. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, in that, one, in that wonderful text, Dr. King makes this point. He basically says, as long as white Americans believe that uh, racial equality is, is a philanthropic enterprise, that it's charitable, that it's charity, then we will never, genuine, we will never achieve genuine racial equality in this country, uh, that racial justice is, is, is the equivalent of white people doing a favor uh, to, for us, uh, doing us a favor. Um, and, you know, when I think back on the Little Rock Nine, as I listen to the interview, and I remember reading uh, Mary Batillo Bills's, uh, Bills's wonderful book, Warriors Don't Cry, and you think about the sacrifices of what, of what James Baldwin described as the, of those spiritual aristocrats uh, to, to really make real the promises of, of, of democracy, it just simply emboldens me, because I think we stand in an amazing tradition, Roland. Uh, we stand in an amazing tradition of, of extraordinary people who have fought back against this nonsense, and we're going to fight back right now. Uh, we're going to continue to fight. Now, I know uh, our panelists have a question. We'll start with Avis. Hi. So good Hi. to speak with you. Um, I have a you know, one question about one of the more controversial aspects of your book. Uh, so one of the arguments that you make in your book uh, as it relates to this last election uh, was that to send a message to the Democratic Party that blacks should just vote down ballot and mm -hmm. not vote for the president. Um, now, given that we know that we had a very sort of uniquely dangerous Republican candidate, that, you know, in many instances, one could argue that that was a very dangerous tactic. Uh, we know that right. in Michigan, for example, uh, that 90,000 people who voted did exactly what you prescribed in your book. They voted down ballot and they didn't vote for the president. Uh, yet, uh, Hillary lost that state only by 11,000 votes. Right. Do you feel like uh, pushing that narrative around uh, making a statement with this particular presidential candidate and at this particular time was the most wise of decisions? 
Um, you know, um, uh, I, I don't. I don't regret writing that at the time. I, I, I had in mind that it was going to be an election between Jeb Bush and, and Hillary Clinton. Um, uh, I wrote a piece in Time magazine with uh, the political scientist from Columbia, uh, Frederick Harris, uh, asking black folk to strategically vote now that the Republican Party had nominated uh, Donald Trump. Uh, saying that uh, if you lived in a decidedly blue or red state, you could vote your conscience or you could blank out. But if you lived in a battleground state, you should vote for Hillary Clinton. But I don't, I don't regret it. Um, I, I think uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign in Michigan uh, was a disaster. Her campaign in Wisconsin was a disaster. Uh, if they had registered the 25, if they had registered the over a million black and brown voters in Florida, just spent $25 million in Florida to register those unregistered folks, uh, they could have won Florida, but they did refuse to spend the money. Instead, they spent it on on television. They were too busy trying to appeal to uh, uh, Bush Republicans as opposed to activating its base. Uh, so I think on the one hand, uh, I wanted us to recognize the catastrophe, as Cornell West says, the catastrophe of Donald Trump. But we have to uh, be very, very clear that we got to push the Democratic Party uh, because the Democratic Party has been complicit in this mess. To my mind, and I'll say this, and I know it's a controversial statement, y'all, uh, Donald Trump is just an exaggerated indication of the rot that's at the heart of this country. And that's not just a Republican problem. That's, a, that's, the, that's, that's all of us, uh, and particularly the Democratic Party. So I don't regret it. Um, I, 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 I appreciate the attribution of influence with regards to uh, folks outside of Detroit and Flint. Uh, but, I, <laughs> but I think it had a lot to do with the way the Clinton campaign was run. Gotcha. Uh, I've got to uh, end it there because we have to talk about, of course, uh, AIDS Awareness Day. And so, all right, all right folks, uh, show the book again. Eddie Glaw's book. Pull it up, please. It is now in paperback. Uh, the book is now in paperback. Uh, it is Democracy in Black. Uh, how race steel enslaves the American soul. Eddie Glaw Jr. And we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Kickstart your day at seven and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin every weekday morning at seven on TV One.